and directly for 3.5 so those are some small things you can use to try to get better orders uh, another thing i'm seeing here is this order block For my Canadians out there, just anyone trading Forex, I wanted to backtest you as CAD. Tell me if you relate, but when I tell you that I used to hate this pair, I seem to always get stopped out before seeing the price go to my take profit. But since I understood about liquidity and end SMC concepts, everything makes sense now. To keep track of the results, we'll use Trader Edge and analyze the data at the end. As a data scientist, I love those kind of tools. And you can go get your 7 days for free by using the link in the description. And because this was today's trading day, I cannot go farther than 13.43. As you know, I'm starting on the London session to try to help people trading during the London session. And I'm waiting for levels such as two days low, just like right now, to be taking out or two days high with some yesterday's level before taking a trade. So we do have a small displacement, a fair value gap right there, but you can see here that we broke no highs. However, in here we did. So we had the second leg that was that broke this one. We have this fair value gap right there. And we can just put the order right there covering this low so that's a five pip the first level is this one here for 2.84 2.9 all right so a nice take profit and you can see here how we rejected this is on directly it's because of this high right there all right let's now add this trade to trader edge so this trade was a 2.9 percent profit on a 100k account which gives 2900 and we'll keep on adding them and analyze everything at the end such as the profit factor the edge score will come to that all right let's put it to the side and let's update the two days low which is this one here All right, so we had this fair value gap, but I did not take it because there was no high that was taking out. You can see here, the high is this one right there. So this was not a trade. But we're having maybe a second leg. Let's see. Yes, we do. So we have this fair value gap. We had the displacement. We had the break of this high right there. The liquidity taking out below today's low. And then you just put the order. We cover for eight pips uh, the low right there the only thing that i don't like is that it's quite high the fair value gap is quite high it's even higher than the 38 so what i saw some people doing is just putting their order at the 0 0.5 and then we can just go for the first target 3.5 right there so you saw that we filled this one then continue up and directly for 3.5 so those are some small things you can use to try to get better orders uh, another thing i'm seeing here is this uh, order block right there with the open of the lowest candle right there you can see here that's what we came up to this level here this one and this one so we could have even used this level here to even get a that's quite far-fetched for nine percent but those are some things you can study into ICT's library and then use different things. You could use the breaker here. I think that's a breaker. You can use the order block. You can use the fair value gap. But I used simply the 50 fib because I felt like we would need to come back at least to some equ equilibrium or a small discount before going back up. Because taking a trade even higher than the 38.2, I think it's quite risky. I was doing that sometimes, especially at the beginning when I was learning about the fair value gap, but you can better your entries by studying ICT concepts. So this second trade was a 3.5. All right, so we didn't take out the low of the day because the low of the day right now is this one but we have a huge fair value gap here and then this is the end of the london session at 5 a.m 
usually between five and seven. I don't think people should trade. I'm not sure what ICT is telling about that because me personally, I'm only trading the New York session. So there was maybe something here, but this one didn't break this high. So this wouldn't even be in a trade. So you can see here that between five and seven, I think it's quite messy. We're going from one session to another. Did we break this high? Okay, yes, we did. So I almost missed this one. So we have this five hour gap right there. We have the high that was breaking out, the displacement. And then we can just put that here. So we had the two days old that was taking out. We had the displacement, we had the fair value gap and we had the high breaking out. And then we just put the order to a 3.8. All right, there you go for an order. 3.8. Let's just add it to Trader Edge. Let's now update the two days low. Is it this one? No, it's this one. So to be honest, we're doing quite well. I was not expecting that. Of course, it's back testing, but you can see clearly how we're going from one low of the day to the high of the day. And we're going back and forth, taking out everybody. So that was a nice trade here, but I did not take it because this weren't lo the lows of the day. But you can see here that we took this level, had this fair value gap, broke this level here, and then went up. But I'm only taking uh, trades out of important levels. As right now, you can see here that we're coming close to the two days high. So we just took it. Let's see if we have the displacement. Okay, we do seem like we have a displacement. Let's check. We need to a break of low. Okay, so we had the displacement. Then we had the break of this low. Let's check if we have a fair value gap. A nice fair value gap right there on the second leg. And all we need to do, put the order right there. Stop. Let's just go with six to cover this high right there. And then let's just go for the first level. In this case, 4.64. So are we gonna get triggered? Yes. So we did get a trigger. So depending on your spread in your broker, you should add that to the fair value gap to make sure you get triggered into those trades. Because sometimes the precision is so high that you can just see something right there and then just continues back down. This is what happened to me in my last uh, video on GBPUSD. And there you go for 4.65 so some great profit right there isn't it interesting how we're going from one low which was this one one low to the the other one and if you even look at this trade right there you can even go for the high of the day right there but i think it's pretty risky of course your win rate will suffer from that but look how interesting this is and we're getting close to the 11 a.m let's see if we have one last trade before that But what I'm seeing here is this fair value gap right there. After taking all of those lows, let's see if we have a reaction. No, nothing. And then we came to 11 a.m. Now my favorite part, let me give you the tip of the day. Usually I like checking this data after backtesting session of multiple days to so have more data and not just four trades. But what I wanted to focus on is to really pay attention to the consecutive losses metric. This is in my opinion something many traders do not take enough consideration of because even if you have an overall return of 15%, if you lost 10 trades in a row before bringing it back up to 15%, then your drawdown is way too high, especially if you're trading a funded account because risking 1% every time with this drill down will put your account at risk. So if you don't really know your consecutive losses metric, I suggest you really go check on that. 
and if you want to see me lose some trades you can go check this backtest of GBPUSD right there.